So we're back with another what I eat in a week, but this isn't just any what I eat in a week because today I'm going to show you guys how I construct meals without actually making a grocery list before I go shopping. A couple of videos ago, I took you grocery shopping with me, but in last week's episode, I asked you if you wanted to see this process, you said yes. And this is everything that I got. So just a quick recap, I basically made some oats featuring the pears and walnuts that I purchased as well as a warm salad featuring the kale and red onion, as well as the farro and Japanese sweet potato that I already had on hand. And I made a smoothie using basically everything, the only exception being some frozen banana in my freezer. And then I finished it off with a romesco pasta that I made from the bell peppers that I bought. So if you wanna see the process of how I made any of that, then I will link that video down below. And also it's probably popping up on the screen right now. That's where we're at so far. Moving on, we're gonna be making one of my quintessential breakfasts, which is a juice, specifically a green juice, because this is the easiest way to get your greens in and not have to like gnaw on lettuce all day long. And again, I'm using everything that I got. The only thing you're not seeing on camera was the dandelion greens, but I did add that in. Also some ginger, which I already had in my refrigerator in a like sealed jar and it keeps forever because like most roots, you don't want to let it dry out. And what I'm trying to show you here and probably failing at is that you want to alternate your juicy ingredients versus your dry ingredients. So before I put in any greens, I'll put in like a piece of apple or a cucumber before and after so that that feeds it through the machine better. And no, I did not forget about the peaches. We're just juicing these separately because they are gonna be a part of their own recipe. So we're not gonna count this one just yet. I'm gonna save it for when we actually utilize them. You should take this as your daily reminder to save some of the glass packaging from like your food purchases, especially when they cute, because then you can repurpose them as I've done here, or you can even use them in your pantry. I also find it just as cute when things like don't match. And if you've seen any of my food scraps videos, you also know that I like to save the pulps because there's plenty of ways that you can also utilize these in your cooking. And next up, I'm going to be making some stuffed peppers, especially since we love a quick dish that we can just throw in the oven and be done with, which this isn't entirely because I'm definitely using a frying pan, but you get it. So from my pantry, I am grabbing some lentils. And since they're running kind of low, I'm also going to throw some orange ones in there. And then I've also pre-soaked some sun-dried tomatoes, even though we're also going to use a fresh tomato, because this is how you build flavor. You guys have heard me mention this before, but instead of just using fresh garlic versus roasted versus dehydrated garlic powder, not the same thing, right? But if you layer them, all of a sudden you've got complexity, which basically translates to good, delicious all the adjectives you want. And because you know I love an onion, we gotta throw a shallot in there as well because these were in my refrigerator and they gotta get used at some point. And because as you can see, I am running very low on olive oil, we're gonna use some vegan butter. And yes, this is me using my cast iron pan for the first time. I'm so proud of me because y'all understand how intimidated I was and I still kind of am. Like sometimes I question if I'm taking care of it right. The only way we gonna find out is to start. So here we are. I don't know what it was about this mixture, but just these smelled amazing. So if you want your kitchen to smell like you're doing something, throw this on. We're then going to add in our lentils and to cook those, I'm going to add in some veggie stock. Again, another recipe that I've made from uh, my food scraps videos. So if you want to see that, I'll put it at the top of the screen and in the description box. And I originally went just for like garlic, onion, oregano, but then I remembered that I had the vervre. And honestly, not putting this in lentils, is just not an option anymore. Anytime I make lentils or anything for that matter with this, the smell is intoxicating and the taste is so good. So if you haven't seen the episode where I made Ethiopian food, do yourself a favor and get this. 
Unless you don't like spicy food, of course, because you've been warned. But honestly, the blend is harmonious. And if you know you clumsy, please do not cut towards your body like this. Turn your knife away from you. Please, please don't harm yourself in the kitchen. So again, the highlight of my groceries are the bell pepper and the tomato in this recipe, and then everything else I have used either from my fridge or my pantry. So I'm gonna stuff my peppers. Make sure you do dress the inside before you stuff them with a little bit of fat. And then I'm gonna throw them in the oven until they're done to my liking. I don't like them too soft or too mushy. Still want a little bit of bite to them. So I think that was about 35-ish minutes. And this is why I like enamelware for like dishes because it also doubles as cookware. If you wanted to, you could throw these on the stove. In fact, I might actually show you some recipes where I do this more often. The next day I had the rest of my green juice for breakfast because I basically got a full 32 ounces of juice. And that's what happens when you use like high water content fruits like uh, cucumber and apples. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you wanna get the groceries to do it yourself, but you also don't wanna go broke. Another breakfast I had because I have been fiending. I haven't had a smoothie bowl in so long. So the mango that I chopped up in last week's what I eat in a week, I froze it and I am now using it with some jackfruit. And if you're wondering where these strawberries came from, basically sometimes when I'm running errands, I will eventually end up at a store that also has food in it. And so I will nonchalantly pick up one or two things. So I did grab a couple of items this week, but I will show you those later as well as give you guys an overview at the end. y'all been asking me because I've been saying it for the longest that it's so easy to make your own cheeses at home and yes it is so this is finally me doing that I'm not sure if I filmed it in quite the easiest way for you to see every single step but as always the first step is pre-soak my cashews because this removes a lot of the digestive inhibitors so you want to drain that and then you can also give them a rinse and then I will blend them with some fresh water i first start out with a little bit and then gradually add more basically until i get the consistency that i'm looking for so you can change the texture based on like the kind of cheese you're going for And for lack of a better word, if you like the funky taste of cheese, then now is the time where you actually want to add in a probiotic capsule, which I have skipped just because a step isn't necessary for me. And as y'all know, my probiotic has like a double capsule system and it's just, I ain't doing all that. But keep in mind, that's a step you would take. You want to do it at the very end so that you're not um, creating too much heat and friction from your blender. If you want, you can just kind of mix it in by hand and then you want to strain your cheese through a cheesecloth. Or in this case, I'm using a nut milk bag. And then you want to put something weighted on top, which is basically going to slowly drain it, but still let those probiotics do their magic. So you would leave this actually out on your counter in like a semi room temperature or warm ish environment. And next up, I'm making a chia seed pudding, which you guys know is normally more of like a dessert, especially the way I normally make it, which is very thick and custardy. But I decided I wanted to have it for breakfast. So what better ingredient to use than matcha? mixing this with some homemade cashew milk even though you don't have to strain it this time i did because i just wanted it to be um lighter i sweetened it with some agave but also still added some um, of the date syrup that i made in last week's video because remember it only keeps for a couple of days so you want to remember to like keep incorporating it into your food so it doesn't go bad before you finish it and then I let this set in the refrigerator overnight, just like you would with oats. And speaking of oats, you could also make overnight oats matcha flavored. So always feel free to take these recipes and incorporate them into like your lifestyle or what it is that you like to eat. But if you do make anything, make sure you tag me because y'all know I love to see it. 
And then next up is just like a snack item. I am making the dip of all dips, guacamole. Which again is utilizing everything that I bought from the grocery store with the exception of the lime, which I already had. Remember, I never let my refrigerator go completely empty on top of everything that's also in my freezer as well as my pantry. And so that's also one of the things that kind of makes this possible. Speaking of the freezer, we're finally going to utilize those peaches. So I'm taking the pulp that I froze as well as some of the juice. Remember, always want to save at least a little bit of the juice to use with your pulp because that is where all of the flavor is. So we've got to add some of it back. Again, we're going to sweeten it with some date syrup. Then I'm going to grab my oats from my newly organized pantry. If you guys didn't see that video, I'll make sure to link it down below. And with this, I'm actually just gonna make some quick granola. So we're gonna toast this up in the pan with a little fat, a pinch of salt, and a little bit of sweetener. And I'm actually gonna add like a little bit of cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger to my peaches to make this kind of a, you know, seasonal. Give it that fall flavor, but not too much. And voila, we have a parfait. Although messy, this was delicious. So highly recommend this one. And another stack that I would usually have is just like apples and peanut butter. But again, going with the seasonal theme, I wanted to make kind of a salted caramel apple. So this is again me using the date paste only. I've thinned it out with a little bit more water to give us, you know, more of that caramel sauce consistency. Just remember that again, the water will dilute the flavor and also shorten the shelf life. So don't forget to use this up. And while this is good by itself, I still love my apples with like walnut and peanut butter. So I'm gonna add some um, chopped peanuts and some vegan chocolate chips. And then for dinner, we're actually gonna take the romesco sauce that we used for that pasta previously. And I'm just gonna bulk it up with some um, sun-dried tomatoes just because normally I do put tomatoes in this, but as y'all saw, I only used peppers. You also notice that I added some of the tomato soak water. Feel free to add more than that and make this thinner if you would like, but I'm going for more of a chicken parmesan. So that's why I'm laying it on thick. And yes, I have pre-frozen my tofu and pressed it so that we get more of a meaty texture. And then speaking of items I picked up throughout the week, this eggplant is another one of them. 
And for that, I'm just using like some garlic, basil. But if you have it, you can even brush these with some uh, pesto. That would be delicious. I just didn't want all the oil. And then with the cheese that we made, you can take this opportunity to season it to your liking. Put in all of your spices, or you could even make a cheese wheel and dehydrate it so you get skin on the outside. There's tons of things you can do. So if you guys wanna see more of them, let me know, but I'm keeping it super simple here. A lot of these things did come from my pantry and or back stock that was all already in the refrigerator or freezer, but the bell peppers were the star of this meal. Some other things that I got, because as y'all saw, I ran out of olive oil, so I needed to go grab that. And while I was at it, I also got some bread. So we're gonna use both of those in this recipe, which is starting off with the carrots from my grocery shop. So these I dressed in that olive oil along with the thyme, salt, pepper, the huge. Total missed opportunity because I definitely should have added some onions in here as well. And then we're trying something a little bit different. I am making some hot honey, AKA spiced maple syrup. I don't know if you guys noticed, but my fiance got some Brussels sprouts while we were in LA. And although I don't remember what they taste like, I do remember that they had a spicy um, maple syrup on them. So I decided to make some so that I could give it to him and he could figure it out. Although I am making Brussels sprouts, I ain't making those because I, again, I have no idea what was in them. While I'm waiting for that to infuse, I'm gonna cut up my sweet potato bun into some giant croutons. my carrots have roasted i'm going to put them into a pot with my veggie stock and my spices which is basically like cumin ginger all that good stuff but you'll notice that if you're looking for the full recipe it is not in the description box because i think this one needs a little fine tuning like i said i forgot the onions so we'll revisit that later but to finish my brussels sprouts i added in the spicy maple syrup and then i actually finished it in the oven because that is the joy of cast iron you can do that
and that was dinner. Normally I would finish off a soup like this with like a cashew cream or some type of heavy cream to just really thicken it up, silk it out and make it really satiating. But I caught myself being healthier and making it a little less fat, a little lighter, but uh, it might just need it. So again, we'll come back to that later. And if you thought we were done with all of the apples that I bought this season, we are not. No ma'am. So I'm juicing the green apples that were already in my refrigerator because I thought tis the season for a apple cider. So that is what you could do with this. However, I decided to make some apple cider oats. Yes, you heard that correctly. We are making spiced apple cider oats. Instead of using water or milk, I am cooking my oats in apple juice. So if you don't have a juicer at home, don't worry. You can use bottled juice from the store. And then all you have to do is add in your pumpkin pie spice. Now I'm just going for, again, a cinnamon ginger situation because I generally find the clove and allspice to be a little bit too much. So I don't buy pumpkin spice um, and that's enough. I think I even added in a little bit of vanilla extract too. I finished this off by topping it with some fresh apples for that crunch as well as some pecans and my date syrup. But another great addition would be like a cinnamon spice vanilla cream or even your favorite vanilla yogurt ice cream whatever you like i don't film every single thing i eat in a week the only exceptions really are that you didn't see me eat like the grapefruit which i just had by itself and you also didn't see a couple of salads that i made so other than that i've gone through all of the groceries that you guys saw me buy the pantry items that i utilized were oats pasta lentil rice nuts and seeds and my sun-dried tomatoes and then additional items that i purchased minus the olive oil were bread brussels sprouts strawberries and eggplant so there's a little glimpse at how I at least go about making meals without making like a grocery list prior to going shopping. This is what I came up with after the fact, but I fully don't expect anyone to do this. So there's nothing wrong with having a plan before you go to the grocery store. And in fact, it is something I'm going to be implementing. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, or if you guys want to see how I actually make a plan and then go grocery shopping, let me know. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.